the chief exponent of Thank God is Friday is here. And so joining us now is Ojinika Ojiope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Just make it louder. <laughs> Dr. Martin knows how to cheer me up. We apologize for that technical glitch earlier. How are you this morning, Ayo? TGIF. TGIF. Rufi on fire. Chief exponent. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to have a good Friday, hopefully. Well, good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending. The hashtag and bad governance in Nigeria continues to gain momentum as the proposed hunger protest latest for August 1st draws near. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Thursday met with traditional rulers from across the country, led by the Sultan of Sokoto, Mohammed Abubakar III, and the Oni of Ife, Adeyeye Ugusi, at the State House in Abuja to discuss the current state of affairs in the country. The Oni said that traditional rulers are not in support of any violent protests and expressed fears that the planned protests may be hijacked by people that have ulterior motives. Let them put a face to it and don't let it be hijacked by people that has ulterior motive. That is our stand. We condemn such acts fully. We traditional rulers are not engaged in people, especially the youth, coming out to start looting, to start breaking down law and order. We are parents, we are traditional rulers, we are closer to them, we are going to go back home and continue to engage them. Well, earlier in the day, the president had said that he took part in the protest against the military regime in the country, but that the protest was not violent adding that he has worked hard to uphold Nigeria's 25 years of unbroken democracy. Tinubu made the comment when he received a letter of credence from the new United States ambassador to Nigeria, Richard Milley. Let me read his uh, statement there. During the military era, we made our voices heard against dictatorship, and I was part of the group that engaged in peaceful protests without resorting to the destruction of property. Inasmuch as we believe that demonstrations are part of democracy, we will never encourage any protests that lead to the de destruction of lives and property. Well, uh, Dr. Abati, uh, I mean, this is what we have been talking about, about, you know, uh, peaceful protests. And that's what, you know, you can hear the government saying that it has to be peaceful if there is going to be protests. The protests should not result to anarchy. But well, in the meantime, the Department of State Services, in a statement on Thursday, said that it has identified those behind the planned nationwide protest, adding that they found it to be politically motivated. Their tweet reads in part, DSS counsels against planned protest in Nigeria. While the Department of State Services, DSS, has followed the discourse on planned protests in parts of the country in the coming weeks by persons and groups yet to identify themselves in the public as leaders of the plot. While peaceful protest is a democratic right of citizens, the service has confirmed a sinister plan by some elements to infiltrate the protest and use it to cause chaos and extreme violence in the land. It has also identified the reasons behind the protest to be political. The plotters desire to use the intended violent outcome to smear the federal and sub-national governments, make them unpopular, and pit them against the masses. The long-term objective is to achieve a regime change, especially at the center. Based on the foregoing, the service wishes to warn all protest groups to ensure any form of proposed rage, anarchy, and spoliation, while the different levels of government have routinely explained their agenda to ameliorate alleged harsh economic conditions. The service urges the prospective protesters to listen to the voice of reason, good conscience, and patiently engage with the authorities in the interests of peace. I mean, again, it is good to see that the DSS also has reacted in this manner. But Dr. Bati, I've heard you talk about these flyers do, that go around and they say days of rage, which we should condemn because we've seen them on social media. The protests should be peaceful. I don't know how many times I would say this. The idea of protest is our constitutional right. But I'll say to you again that I have seen these 
flyers. And one of the flyers I saw was on a presidential, a former presidential candidate here in Nigeria, Omar El Shore. And, uh, but let me take one of the tweets that he had put out at one point. He wrote, uh, question, who are the organizers of the end bad governance in Nigeria? Days of rage revolt in Nigeria. Answer, hunger, unemployment, insecurity, poverty, and corruption. Yes, we have heard that. We know that that is why the youth want to come out to protest. They have identified their grievances. But you can see his flyer here. And that's the flyer that says days of rage protest. And I think that this is not what we should encourage. Absolutely not what we should encourage. I believe that, you know, uh, I don't know who uh, can speak with the people on social media to make sure that if they are going to protest, it's about what their grievances are and not going out to cause violence, anarchy, and rage. In the meantime, the president also met with a delegation of Islamic leaders led by Shakai Bala Lau at the State House on Thursday. At the meeting, the president said that his victory at the polls was purely by divine intervention and careful planning, adding that he has no cabal or sponsors while reacting to the planned protest. The president said that it is fueled by anger and hate that could denigrate into violence and set the country backwards. He restated his administration's commitment to meeting the needs of citizens, emphasizing that Nigeria's economy is on the path of recovery. Definitely, he has set the motion rolling. He has been conversing with traditional rulers, yeah. with governors, with citizens. Before I read some of his reforms, I uh, love your comment while I catch my breath. All right, so, so very quickly, yes, and I'm so glad that you pointed out, because rage simply means extreme or violent anger. Absolutely. So when you say days of rage, especially as promoted um, by Mr. Shore, then you would understand the concerns of this administration, of this government, in order to, um, you know, to prevent a state of anarchy, breakdown of law and order. However, I think it is also important to separate it from what a number of a, a good number of young people have come out to say is a peaceful protest to demonstrate their dis dissatisfaction with the current state of governance. And that's why he was right in saying that the proponent of this pro peaceful protest is the reality or are the, reali the realities of what Nigerians are facing. Are people hungry? Yes. Is there unemployment? Yes, the stats show it. Um, are people finding it difficult to make en ends meet? Yes. And then what we've consistently said side by side um, to, um, in, in terms of against violent protests is that let the president come and speak to the yes. people. Let him highlight some of the things that he has done and what he will do. And for the traditional rulers who have gone, I hope that the traditional, traditional rulers use the opportunity as fathers of different communities to state the grievances of their people to the president, not just a, you know, um, shake hand meeting, but an opportunity to really advocate for the people that they, that they govern, that they rule over in their different communities. I think that was a great opportunity for that. And we must have more traditional rulers and spiritual rulers come out to speak Absolutely. up about right. the situation you of things. You talked about uh, the president highlighting some of the things that yes. he has done. Let me um, highlight uh, the statement that he made when he met with the traditional rulers there. He said... We are reworking the social welfare scheme to reach the ward level, which is the closest to our people. We will ensure that we reestablish connection with the wards again so that we can give allowances to the poor and the vulnerable. The student loans will pay for school fees. There will be monetary support for the education of our children. Consumer credit will support citizens in buying cars and houses, and they can repay them gradually. We have increased the minimum wage by more than 100%. The sponsors of the protest do not love our country. They have no love for the nation. They do not understand citizenship. They have alternative passports. They are in different parts of the world, holding meetings virtually. We do not want to turn Nigeria into Sudan. We are talking about hunger, not burials. We have to be careful. We should be careful with premature politics, politics of hate and anger. The internet has made it possible to hold meetings in artificial settings. They hold meetings and sponsor anger. I heard you wanted to say something. Yeah, I want to say a lot. Number one, please. Nobody supports violent protest. Yeah. I condemn totally any attempt of violent protest. But also, I also condemn any attempt to stop people from hearing their voice. 
to speak their mind. I think it was Voltaire that said very prominently, I might disagree with you totally, but I will never stop you the chance for speaking your mind. Mm. The truth is, let's not deceive ourselves. If they say Portraits have political slant, mm -hmm. one of their APC governors, Governor Fahemi, recently came out to say that in 2012, mm -hmm. the reason why they protested was because of politics. There's always been political connotation to protests in this country, yeah. except we want to deceive us. Dr. Abati seated here. The economic indicators were very good under Jonathan, better than this. The protest was because of politics. I am not for politics. Mm -hmm. But the greater problem is the hunger. Right. Which he has not addressed. Which we are saying he should address. He said he's giving student loan. In a country where people can hardly get jobs, you are giving student loan. Do you know the debts that will come out of the student loan? I've always been for Even student in America, loan. that you have a better economy. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many times Joe Biden has said they should clear student loan debts? He said they are going to give people money to buy cars and homes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, look on. You will incur more debts. Do you know how much debts, cash apps, have destroyed Nigerian people? All right. Microfinance banks. What do you propose? What I propose mm -hmm. is make the economy better. How do you make the economy better? Invest in small businesses. Okay. Then you must do something about petrol prices and the rising inflation. The rising inflation is also caused by over 100 trillion in money in circulation. When a Bayfield wanted to solve that problem, didn't press some governors supporting President Tinubu there went to the Supreme Court and said no with the narrow resign policy till today. And he should tell us, is it paying subsidy or not? Mr. Wale do say is technically what is technically paying subsidy? Right. Tell us if you are be honest with transparent with the people. So these are the things. I totally condemn violence. Absolutely. But President Tinubu. Mm. Has not done a lot to make Nigerians happy. The empirical facts are there. All Let's right. stop deceiving ourselves. All right. I have read some if of If he does, we will praise him. Yes. I have read some of the reforms that he has said that he has put in place at this point. I mean, even as we speak, the UN has also said that they have intelligence, that the protests might be hijacked. We've also heard from the DSS saying that the protests might be hijacked. But you know, users on social media have been listening. I'll pull up a video from a TikToker, Uncle Pros, who actually was very, very um, um, adamant about this protest. And he's changed his mind. Let's take a look. Um, I have so many reasons why we have to suspend the protest. First of all, we discovered that ethnicism has come in, tribalism has come in, religion matters have come in. And whenever there is religion issues, of course, it's a big problem in Nigeria. And secondly, we are looking at the uh, security, I mean, the level of insecurity in Nigeria. That some people might take advantage of the process and hijack the protest. So we look at all of that and we decide to, okay, let's uh, step aside and let it, let it rain. Let's see how it goes. As the masses are preparing, government is preparing. And you know nobody can fight government. So if the people that disagreed decide to impersonate and join the real congregation that are for the protest, they will, they will start causing problems, harms, and doing all the illegal things violations of the constitution the politicians will not escape us forever they should continue to be hitting on us but time will come when all these things will change and bounce on them all right uncle pros there has talked about you know religion and uh, has gotten into it we've also heard from our traditional rulers even re um, the oba of benin also sent his statement if we can pull up that statement here he's asking nigerians to actually postpone this because of the intelligence that they have heard he said that you know the federal government um, you know should also speed up efforts at implementing its economic policies to ease the you know current uh, hardship faced by Nigerians. All right, Dr. Bati. The government is not saying do not protest. You exactly. can protest. Mm -hmm. It's your right under Section 39. But the government is saying that no irresponsible gov no responsible government will fold its arms if people want to cause mayhem. All the security agencies have spoken in unison that they are prepared and that they will not allow a situation where anybody imposes anarchy on Nigeria. Now, the uh, military headquarters, some people say they cannot join. I said, look, the military can be called in in the aid of civil authority under Section 
two, sub 2C two of the 1999 Constitution, so it's within their rights. What I do not understand, however, is that the military headquarters, defense headquarters, is saying they know the unscrupulous elements. DSS says that there are some people who, are, who have been planning and they, they are tracking them. The police say they too are ready. Why is it that nobody has been arrested? Why is the uh, state, a responsible state, having identified people who want to cause problems, who not for these arms? We should hear that some people have been arrested because they want to cause uh, uh, problems. And then, of course, they too will have the right to uh, defend uh, uh, their rights. President Tinubu says some of the people are people who have uh, uh, alternative passports, who are from other areas. We need no more information. information. Who are those people? We should be told who those people are. So traditional rulers are against it. APC governors say they don't want problem. Mm -hmm. uh, state governments that are not even APC are saying, well, we want peace in this country. The big point that President Tinubu made, is not about the fact that he was involved in the protest, it was peaceful, but that any form of protest, Kenya style, Uganda style, Tunisia style, uh, Bangladeshi style, is going to even affect the masses of the people. Transportation will be disrupted. The same economy that we say is bad, it will get worse. Now, people are complaining about bad governance. Yes, they can protest and express their grievances. They have the opportunity to mobilize towards 2027. If you are aggrieved, wait for 2027 and make your statement with your vote. That's what the people of uh, uh, Britain have done. They voted out the tourists that they think uh, are not doing well. So that's what is done in democratic uh, societies, right. not through violence, right. not through anarchy. Well said, Dr. I'm sure nobody here wants violence. Absolutely. And we have said that much. Well said. And in fact, uh, the, the defense uh, spokesman was saying that if you have a smartphone or you have a car or you have a conditioning in your house. So he, he was raising it as an attack on the middle class. Mm, well, all right. You've said well. well. Today, you know, all right. Shall we head over to the United States? Well said, you all. I think that we've made our point here. The government is not, asking, is not saying that we shouldn't protest, but it should not be violent. That's the main point that we've taken away so far. Should we head over to the United States? Dr. Abati, this morning I heard you talking about those that say Kamala Harris. I don't know who you're referring to, but you know there is a... Uh, you are one of them. Who are they? I, I say Kamala. Am I the like, only one? Like uh, Donald guess, Trump. Guess Kamala. What? That's what? So basically there's a video that I've started trending on social media with showing Donald Trump back in 2020 when he criticized Kamala Harris saying that she's not going to become the nation's best female president. Let's take a look. And by the way, Kamala will not be your first female president. She will not be your first female president. It's not the way it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to have a socialist. Look, we're not going to be a socialist nation. We're not going to have a socialist president, especially a female socialist president. We're not going to have it. We're not going to put up with it. It's not going to happen. Donald Trump. Dr. Bati says it's not Kamala. <coughs> it's Kamala Harris. Well, I call her Kamala Harris. Well, the question was, Will he eat his words? That was the question Only with that video. Few Only a few now. more months to tell. Well, the uh, Harris for President campaign has launched its first official video less than a week after U.S. President Joe Biden announced he was dropping out of the race. The soundtrack for the ad is Beyonce's song, Freedom. Let's take a look. We choose free, but get ahead. The freedom to be safe from gun violence. The freedom to make decisions about your own body. We choose a future where no child lives in poverty, where we can all afford health care, where no one is above the law. We believe in the promise of America, and we're ready to fight for it. Because when we fight, we win. So join us, and let's get to work. Well, all right. You heard them again, Dr. Abati. Kamala. I mean, I thought that was such a powerful, powerful the woman ad. Herself yes. Said her name is yeah, we, 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 will, we will figure it out. But that was a great, great, great ad. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Rufa is smiling. We'll keep our fingers crossed. And we'll see what would happen at the polls, whether we'll, America will get their first female president. Well, we'll take our final story then under entertainment to usher in the weekend. The much-anticipated video for the song 
Ogechi the Remix. Featuring Afrobeat superstar Davido has finally been released. The remix gained momentum during the wedding ceremony of the superstar and his longtime partner, Choma. <laughs> I loved it. Of course. Ibo Kwenu. Hey, Ikwes Wenu. Hey, I loved it because he showed so much beautiful diversity and culture, but I was hurt that I didn't see Choma in that video. But it was beautiful to watch and it's out there and you know, you all go have fun this weekend. I'd like to thank you all for your great analysis. Thank God this Friday. TGIF. TGIF. I'd love to thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you guys on What's Trending today. I'll see you all next week.